He was late for work, as usual, and didn't notice that the security guard was different. He didn't even see the blood on the elevator door, but just wanted to get to work as quickly as possible. When he got to the office, two bodies were lying on the floor, and he just ignored them and went back to his seat. As soon as he sat her down, the manager called him into his office. Desmond was used to being scolded for being late, but today the manager didn't scold him but kept sharpening his pencil. There was a fierce look in his eyes. Desmond was confused. He accidentally looked at the floor, but found a colleague lying on the floor with pencils stuck all over his body. This scared Desmond to death. Before he could react, the manager threw him out of the office. Obviously, the manager has a problem, but the manager wasn't the only one with problems. Desmond turned around and realized that all his colleagues were acting weird. He was so scared that he ran for his life, and his co-workers are chasing him like crazy. Desmond was smart enough to use his blind spot to escape for a while, but when he turned around, he saw another co-worker still working hard. Desmond wanted to ask him what happened, however, he scolded Desmond and took a sip of the drink on the table. Desmond suddenly remembered that he had seen a lot of such drinks in the office yesterday. Could this strange phenomena be related to this drink? Just as Desmond was about to leave, he accidentally touched a wire on the floor. His co-worker had edited the video for a day and hadn't saved it yet. He was so furious that his fighting strength increased several times. He threw Desmond 666 meters away. Then he pressed him against the wall. Desmond was about to be suffocated when he pulled out a wooden plank and smashed it on his head. However, his attack caused him to lose his breath. In a state of shock, Desmond hid in a room. It occurred to him that all crazy people work constantly, so he had the idea to pretend to be busy at work. And it worked like a charm. He found a way to escape from the office. But then Desmond realized that his crush was still in the office. So he turned back again. Luckily, Samantha worked in a separate office. She didn't notice anything unusual when she was wearing her earphones, but she had already drunk the black drink. Desmond tried to take it away but spilled it all over the table. You spilled my salt! <laughs> Apparently Samantha didn't drink a lot of the drink, so she wasn't fully mutated, but Desmond kept poking around the edges of her anger, and he got his ass kicked again. Just when things were getting out of hand, Desmond had to backhand her and knock her out, to prevent Samantha from mutating again. He tied her up. When she woke up, Samantha didn't know what happened. Desmond wanted to take her away from here and explain to her, but as soon as they reached the staircase, they saw a group of zombies running up. Desmond pulled back and hid in a room. He had just closed the door when he heard something behind him. A man suddenly jumped on Desmond's back. It was his co-worker Morad, but he wasn't drinking. They made sure they're not mutated, and then they're ready to fight together. After the zombies in the office have left, the three of them come to the stairway again. But this scene surprised them so much, they couldn't make a sound, and went into respiratory arrest. It seems that they have to take another route to escape. The elevator is also malfunctioning at the moment. Maybe an air vent would be a good option, but after 10 minutes of holding Samantha's body up, they couldn't get her into the vent. Looks like they're gonna have to break out the window. Desmond immediately hit the glass with his printer, but instead of remaining intact, the glass triggered the security system. The entire exterior of the building was instantly encased in steel plates. This is a weapons manufacturing company, so it has the highest level of security system. Now, only the top management of the company can disable the security system. This also means that they have to go through a floor full of zombies to get to the top floor. Looking at the zombies attacking each other, Desmond once again thought of using the same disguise as before, so the three of them pretended to be zombies and successfully arrived at the HR department. The women here have all mutated. They're starving and besieging a strong man named Franklin. It's a horrible scene. Desmond had the bright idea to go to the office and make a radio call. He lied about the company being on vacation and distracted the zombies to save Franklin. All they had to do was walk through the sales department to get to the top office. But the staff here is very hot-tempered. I guess the salesmen are always being pissed off by their customers. They'll have to force their way through. The team went to the utility room and made their own weapons. Due to the large number of zombies, they had to untie Samantha for a while. Once everything was in place, the fighting force them panicked and made their way to the sales office. I have to say, these four are pretty tough. They were able to face the challenge of these intelligent zombies without losing a single step, especially Samantha. With a few drops of the drink, she easily knocked out a few of the strongest men. One of the survivors jumped on Desmond and asked him if he had any of the drink. But Murad mistook him for a zombie, so we got hit in the neck with an axe. That was the first time he'd ever killed one. Desmond didn't tell him that the man wasn't mutated. After all, Murad did it to save him. The four of them were very surprised to see the zombies lying on the ground. 
When did we become so powerful? Before they could sigh too much. The four of them fought their way to the door of the top office. But the executives didn't want to let them in because they thought they were infected with the virus. However, the executives were careless. A cleaner opened the door without a fuss. An awkward look was exchanged. The four of them made it into the office. As soon as they met, they raised their weapons and threatened each other. Then one of the bosses said, This is a weapons manufacturing company. No violence is allowed. This sounds a little bit wrong but they both lowered their weapons. They talked to the owner and found out that there was a problem with the drinks. But the drinks were produced for the military. As for why the drinks suddenly appeared in the company, he wasn't quite sure either. While they were talking, the manager, who had turned into a zombie, came to the door with his zombie employees. I looked at their angry faces and guessed that they were usually often suppressed by their boss too. The manager angrily yelled at the boss and told him to raise all the employees' wages to $2,500 or else there would be serious consequences. The boss smiled contemptuously and said that you can kill me, but don't touch my money. This completely enraged the manager. Then he and his staff started to attack him break down the door. The boss hid in his office and panicked. Desmond blocked the door with his desk. Franklin came out with a drink in his hand. As a lowly laborer, he heard what the manager said and wanted to join the strike. But as soon as he walks out the door, he's hit in the stomach by the manager's axe. Apparently he hasn't mutated yet, with the zombie horde coming into the office next. Desmond and Murad take cover in a small office. The boss shoots a zombie with his machine gun. But there's too many of them, so he has to back away. The two shareholders have become fresh food for the zombies. Ten seconds later, the zombies break through the door. Although the boss has a gun in his hand, he can't withstand the constant attack of so many zombies. When he was about to change bullets, the manager suddenly cut off his palm. The manager didn't stop after being the boss. After all, a small company is not enough for him. He wanted to take the boss's palm to unlock the security system and infect more people outside. He also left a few of his men behind to eliminate Desmond and Murad. Desmond quickly grabs his shotgun and takes out all the zombies with a single shot. The crisis is over, but to men this situation is not good. They had to find the antidote. So they take her to the RD department where they run into Dr. RD. Under Desmond's pressure, the doctor told them the truth. It turns out that this drink was specially supplied by the military to enhance the combat ability of single soldiers. But this batch of drink is substandard. However, it was used by another doctor to give it to his staff because the boss never gave him a raise. So he used this way to take revenge. Luckily, there's an antidote. It's in the warehouse downstairs, but it's already full of zombies. In order to save his favorite woman, Desmond takes Mura to the showroom and pulls out the weapons in the display case. They came to the warehouse and saw the manager brainwashing the zombies. And the manager spotted them from the surveillance camera. A large number of zombies are swarming towards them. They hid themselves. The zombies are looking for survivors. Desmond uses the drink to get their attention and then keeps pulling the trigger. Three seconds later, he's taken out a whole bunch of them. With perfect coordination, the two of them finally get away from the zombies and find the antidote. However, at that moment, the manager suddenly appears in his mech and fires a gun without saying a word. Desmond was blown away, but luckily he was not seriously hurt. Due to the fierce firepower of the Mucha, the two of them can only choose to run away. Luckily, they got the antidote. Desmond throws the antidote to Murad and tells him to save Samantha, while he stays behind to block the manager. He keeps trying to lure the manager away with his verbal abuse. Suddenly he's attacked by a zombie on his way out. The manager's gun is already aimed at him. Samantha, who has taken the antidote, arrives in time to save Desmond. The three of them were running away while setting up explosives. When the manager entered the blast zone, Desmond pressed the remote control. But at the critical moment, the remote control did not work. It turns out that the explosives did not put detonators. The manager was extremely arrogant at that moment. Desmond could only use his last resort. He threw the triggered mine on the ground. The next step depends on luck. I did not expect the unlucky manager really stepped on the mine. After a violent explosion, the three of them not only escaped the building, but also ended this terrible disaster. In the witness of Murad, Desmond and Samantha were able to live a life free of worries.